I'm finally back with another video. This video is going to be for people that are getting into vintage or retro test equipment and that have a vintage transistor tester like I do. This is a leader transistor tester, but what I'm going to talk about today basically applies to a lot of testers, um, a lot of vintage testers, so it wouldn't really matter what brand you have. The other day I was using this and I was actually testing an open transistor. I didn't know it was open at the time. And I did the leakage test here, which is the ICEO test. And it showed it as having no leakage because basically the transistor was open. And so at that moment in time, the transistor appeared good, but it was actually bad. So when I put the transistor on the HFE mode here, which is the gain mode, uh, it didn't have any gain. So I basically knew the transistor then was bad. As I just mentioned, other vintage transistor testers have this function too, this ICO function. And if we look at the letters here, of course, the I stands for um, current and there'll be capital letters basically um, normally what you see you see the I which will be uh, it'll be capital and right below that kind of like a subscript lettering also in capital letters will be the I C E O and the C E that means that the test is done between the collector the test is done between the collector and the emitter and the O stands for basically the base is open so that means the transistor, since the base is going to be open, we're not applying current to the base. That means the transistor is not going to have any gain. It's not going to be amplifying anything. And the test here is going to be done, going to be done excuse me, in with reverse bias. Normally, like I think the what I'm going to show here in my example, I'm going to show an NPN transistor. And the collector, for example, would be normally would be positive, but in order to do this test, then what's going to happen is there's going to be this collector is going to be negative and the emitter is going to be positive. That's how the test is done because we're checking basically the reverse leakage current. If you can imagine the leakage, kind of like say you have a water faucet and um, it's leaking and you don't want to. That's really like a loose analogy, basically. So again, the ICEO, that is basically the collector emitter current that flows when the base is left unconnected. And again, since the uh, base is unconnected, then we're not going to have any kind of uh, current gain because we're applying no, we're basically applying nothing to the base. And if you notice here, I have a low and high drive when I test the transistors. What I forgot to mention here, I'm not going to be talking about germanium transistors, FETs, or anything like that. This is just strictly has to do with regular uh, silicon bipolar um, transistors here. Like this is a power transistor. And for example, this would be a little uh, signal transistor. And for the signal transistor, you would use the low drive. And for the power transistor, we can use the high drive. It's got a little G on here. Stands for good. That means I must have tested this sometime in the sometime in the past. So for the first test here, I'm going to go ahead and just use the uh, it's an NPN power transistor. And I looked up the specs so I knew which was base, collector, and emitter. That's the easiest way to do it. Of course, I could use a unit to figure it out, but um, I have one of these specification books or I'll just go online and look that up. It's really the quickest way to do things. And I know here, for example, the uh, left pin is the base, the middle is collector, the right is the emitter, and I know it's an NPN. So like on my tester, I would put it here. This 
switch here, which switches between PNP and NPN, where my thumb is on. I put that to the NPN transistor and uh, the transistor drive. This is a power transistor. I'm going to put it to high drive. I'll go ahead and do that. Now, there's a general, basically a general rule with these transistors, and that is like a high power transistor like this. That's going to have a higher leakage and a lower gain. And with the small transistors like this, for example, they will basically have less leakage and a higher gain. That's just as a general rule. But it's not unusual if you were to test a transistor like this that it barely has any leakage. Of course, if it's showing major substantial leakage, then um, you would go ahead and have to get rid of it. Best thing to do or rather the base case is if you have known good transistors and you compare them because a lot of times if you look in the like data sheets for transistors they won't list ICEO it's not it's it's not listed there so that could be a problem too because you don't know for example well this particular transistor I mean how much leakage is it actually supposed to have right but normally these um, silicon transistors here they don't really have that much leakage so the transistors hooked up but I have to of course mention one more thing which I of course forgot which is when I do do the ICEO test down here you have different multiplication factors and normally I start out with a high resistance here times 100 and then I keep going down if I don't get a reading times 10 to times 1 um, I don't want it down to times one and I have a extremely leaky transistor and it pegs a needle or something. I don't want that. Um, and also what I normally, I normally do the ICEO test and then I go ahead and switch it to the gain. So I'll go ahead and do the, again, I've got it in the ICEO position. Of course, I got to turn it on. That be, would be a good idea. And... Since the polarity here is set up right where my thumb is, NPN, I already knew that. And here, well, I already know it's a silicon transistor, and it gives me the forward voltage right there, and also says SE for silicon, so I would know that, but I know that already, already. so now I go to the ICEO, and we can see it's uh, got really no leakage at the times 100 position, times 10, and times one I think it went up a tiny bit let me see if I can't zoom in yeah it's really really showing a tiny bit of leakage and the leakage here is on this scale it's in micro amperes so I would say that must be around maybe two micro amperes which is really a little little bit uh, now I'll go ahead and so basically I can say this transistor is not leaking unless of course the transistor is open and when it's open then it'll also show well not leaking basically so I'll go ahead and put it in the the unit now the transistor tester in the gain position HFE which is DC gain and we can see right here it's showing me about almost 60 60 times now it might state something different in the spec book or something like that but this this is a relative value it depends upon your current and your voltage for example um, and also, I should have did the same thing here. I should have um, put the needle back to the right again. And then went down with it like that. You know, just like you did with the old voltmeters. But of course, since I'm behind the camera, I got to do two things at once. So that kind of throws me off. So I got a bad transistor here. I think this is uh, shorted. And I'll just show what happens here if I um, check the ICEO again see the needles already completely pegged out so uh, this one is 100% shot.
So my next transistor is this transistor here, which I believe is the SD667. It's an NPN. I look up the specs online, so I've got the connections here with, on the transistor tester. I have the transistor tester hooked up right. And uh, since I know it's an NPN, I know it's silicon, so when I go ahead and turn this on, this switch is in the VBE, the um, base emitter forward voltage drop position. So, and here of course says uh, SE silicon, but I'm interested of course in the ICEO and the HFE. So I'll go ahead and, and we'll go to the ICEO. This time I've got this switch down here. Then the times 100 position, not times one position. So we'll make sure it doesn't pig out. Um, I think this transistor is good. So, and we'll see here, we get very little leakage. But now we'll go to the HFE, or rather, we'll see if we can't change the resolution here, see if we can't get the needle to go up, and no, it barely, barely moves. So we know we've got very little leakage. So I'll put this back in the times 100 position. Now go to the HFE which is the gain here, or in this case the DC gain. So go to the HFE and the needle, the pointer moved a little bit. So, and there it goes. You can see here, it's, um, I'm on a times 10 scale down here, times right over 20. So it's at least 200, um, the gain. The gain now, this is going to be relative because the gain is going to depend upon the current and the um, voltage. So, but we know it's um, got at least 200 there now. So now I unfortunately can't find that open transistor or any open transistor to um, show this. Anyways, with an open transistor, when I put it here in the... ICEO position it showed me basically that I had no leakage which you think okay it's good but of course uh, it was open which the tra transistor shouldn't be open so when I went ahead and changed it to the HFE then I got zero HFE but basically that told me something was wrong with the transistor of course I always use this tester in conjunction with the for example, I might use the um, the transistor checker or the diode function of my multimeter. I don't just rely on one particular thing, you know. And if I want to get really mean or something, I'll go ahead and get out my curve face or something. But that's always a a hassle. Now, some transistor testers have another <coughs> function called a basically it's called ICBO, and that basically is the reverse current between the uh, collector and the um, base basically with the emitter basically with the emitter open now that's going to be even that's really smaller than the amount of leakage here is going to be even smaller than that so um, I know that's on some testers but not on this one probably like an elaborate tester or an expensive uh, tester so I hope this was somewhat useful just a few things you have to watch out for um, i think i'll call this video to an end now thanks for watching